Hi everybody. For those of you that have been watching my videos, I did a, uh, a video on general principles, just hive inspection, general principles. And when inspecting this hive, I found them to be queenless. And I looked at the hive in the first place because there was little activity. Now you would, you would see here that there's a lot more activity than there was the previous day. Of course, it's a, a nicer day and I see pollen coming in. So before I do anything, I wanna make sure that I was right. What the purpose of this video is, is I'm, I'm getting ready to unite this, this hive with another hive. Whether you have the same type of, of configuration or not on the hive you're going to unite them with, you want to try to drop them down to a single hive body at minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to drop them down to a single hive body and I'm going to move them to a 10 frame hive body. Then after tonight sometime I can of course close them up and move them up to make the, the uh, unite and I will show that in the second part of the video. But the first part of the video is just me going in. Uh, since I'm moving them to 10 frame anyway, I'm going to make sure. I, I marked a frame last time that had eggs on it. I'm gonna look at that frame first, make sure that I don't see cat brood on there and uh, or eggs and a queen, something like that. I'm gonna check that first, make sure that my diagnosis in the first case was right and if, if I was correct before, then I'm going to transfer 10 of the frames, 10 of the 16 frames in here to that hive body and then set them up here. And then after tonight, uh, I'll be able to unite them on a different day, weather permitting, with the other hive. They'll be all ready to go. So let's just get started here. Give me a little smoke. Now they are working harder and there is pollen coming in that I've noticed. So those are two changes that I've noticed since I was in here before. Keep in mind that when you're dealing with a queenless colony, which is what I think we have here, it is going to be a little more aggressive than your average colony. So if you have an aggressive colony, always think that they might be queenless. That could be part of the reason. If you open the the lid and they roar a lot louder than normal. That's the situation you might have as a queenless colony. These guys weren't aggressive last time I was in here, but that doesn't mean they won't be today. Now I'm going to shake these bees off here and I normally do it right on the bottom board there, but I'm going to do it here because I'm going to be changing out that bottom board. this equipment. So before I do anything, I want to make sure I had marked this frame and I want to make sure that there's no queen on there. Give them a little bit of smoke. These bees are already flying up that I shook off here. Go ahead and start recording. Okay. Sorry. okay. So again, pull one of the outside frames. Make sure you get your hive tool in there deep enough to where you don't do that. Pull one of the outside frames. I'm, I'm going to do a video later on bee space and this frame I'm going to use as an example. Because this hive has the wrong bee space. So gently pull this out of there. You don't want to roll bees when you're when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. You roll bees, they get mad and then you get stung. Or if you don't wear equipment, they still sting and they'd still die, but they get aggressive and that leads to further aggression down the road. You can see where the cluster is formed. It's right here. Now I'm gonna move over here pretty quickly because before I start transferring equipment, I wanna make sure that I need to. And I know that if there are frame, this is where eggs were before. So this is where they will be today if they do in fact have a queen that I missed. I see large, lots of drone brood on this side, lots of drone brood. So I have William take a picture of that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is 
shake off some of the bees into the hive. And then I'm going to show you the sections of drone brood that are right here. So I'm going to shake these bees off into the new hive. That's why there's also pollen coming in is because they actually do have larvae. Okay. Now, so you don't even need to waste too much time. You can see lots of drone brood there. Oh my God, there's the queen. No, keep rolling. Okay, so here is the queen. I just saw her, but she is a drone layer now. So this is actually a drone layer situation where we have a queen, but she's no longer viable. Uh, come around behind me so you can see what I'm looking at. And uh, get as close as you can get. And are you shooting the video? Mm -hmm. Let me try to hook that there. The queen is right in here. You'll see a blue dot on her back. There she is. That's the queen. But all I see are drones. I don't see, and I see swarm cells at the bottom. You can show the bottom of the frame. The bottom is up here. The bottom is the top right now because I'm holding the frame upside down. Those are starter queen cells. They've had her lay eggs in there, but all she is laying are drone eggs. There is no cat brood in here. And I'll confirm that as I go along. So we're gonna catch the queen because we do not want to unite this hive with another hive with a, vi with a queen in here, even though she's not viable. Okay, so the queen is right in here. And of course she's, she's this queen, you know, would lead to the death of the colony. So I'm going to catch her here. She's going to try to escape. She might go to the other side. Here she is. Okay. So I got her in the queen cage. Can you see that, William? There's the dot. You see that? So I'm just going to set this aside for now. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Now I'm just going to start moving frames over. So. Now would be a good time to move the hive because all the bees that I'm shaking off are just flying right back into the hive that I'm going to have to empty anyway. Under these, uh, these ventilated, watch out William, I'm going to shove that that way. Under these ventilated covers, by the way, you get a lot of wax buildup which leads to wax moth and other problems. That's one of the downfalls of them. We've removed the queen. Now, I want to talk a second for about the queen. Uh, finding the queen in here is a good thing. Not finding the queen in here means that you had laying workers in there always harder to deal with than a hive with a drone layer. So, so I'm actually happy that we found that queen. Can you hand me the lid in the inner cover? Or the lid in the cover? Inner cover and lid. Um, so I'm, I'm actually happy that we found a queen. You notice that she was marked blue. Blue is 2015. which means that she was mated last year. Smoker. She was mated last year and she's already gone bad, which means she just didn't mate very well. And then of course, the bees can get in through the inner cover hole, but I have a vent at the back. And since I'm preparing this hive for transport, I'm gonna close that vent. And then we're gonna strap it up here.
Well, today I'm going to actually unite this hive with this hive. It's been a while. It's uh, weather's been pretty temperamental. We got a front coming in now. It's just got it just got breezy now, uh, so I have a short window here where I can unite these two hives, and then of course I'll show you the final the final uh, step. So. Before we get started though, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm basically gonna place that hive body on top of this hive and your instincts about doing that are correct. It's, it's against the bee's nature. The mother hive here, I'm gonna call this the mother hive and not the daughter hive. The mother hive here will see them as invaders or robbers or whatever, and they will fight. Vice versa, they'll also see, that's, that's their hive as well, and they'll see these bees, the mother hive, as invaders. So you have to separate them somehow. Now there's a few different methods you can do. You can do, uh, this method is one that I, I don't use. Uh, some beekeepers, good beekeepers, are under the impression that if you keep the queens separated, uh, that if, they're, if that hive, hive had a queen, uh, if you weren't sure, let me put it this way, if you weren't sure that that hive had a queen or not, then using a double queen excluder would keep the two queens from killing them from killing each other and it will uh, but bees can you know regular worker bees can go through this and they can fight that way now good bee, good experienced beekeepers have used this method successfully so i'm not really knocking it i'm just saying i'm not comfortable with them being able to travel but one of the advantages of that is that it's there's great airflow uh great airflow for this hive up here and that's what you you have to be concerned about the Negative parts of it is you have to come back and you have to remove these. Um, that may not matter because I'm going to come back and I'm going to remove that third hive body as well. Another method is the same thing but using a screen. This is just window screen attached to a frame basically. And if you use a double screen, the same thing can happen. Their odors will mix but the bees themselves will not mix uh, until you come remove that screen. But that does give them plenty of time and since if you have an upper entrance like I do the upper part of the hive there that's got the daughter hive they do have an entrance and an exit through the rear entrance they don't right now because they're all closed up but you can use a double screen method um, a single screen screen method is is ill-advised just because the Queens if if you're not sure I in the last part of the video we found the Queen and I, I had to kill her she turned out to be a drone layer so she only had about a half, you know, I don't know, about 30 or 40 um, eggs laid anyway that were hatching into larva, but um, they were all drones, and, you know, she, she just went bad over the winter. Uh, so, but if you weren't sure, some people will split hives or unite hives that they aren't sure where the queen is and they don't want them to fight right away, so they can use this method. So, um, the advantage of that is that you have to come back and you have to remove those screens, but uh, what you can do is come back and see if there are new eggs laid in there. If you, if, you leave, if you leave that on here more than three days, you can come back. If there are eggs in there, you know there's a queen in there, and then you can reevaluate things. Um, maybe do a double, double queen colony or something. The last method I've saved for last, because this is the one I'm going to use, and this is the one I recommend, and the reason I recommend it is because if something happens where you can't make it back to the bees, it doesn't matter. The newspaper method, I'm just gonna take newspaper, I'm gonna take two sheets basically of thin newspaper, I'm gonna put it on top of this hive, I'm gonna cut some slits in there, and then I'm gonna set that hive on top of this hive, and what they'll do is they'll, since I cut the slits in there, there will be ventilation in there, and the odors between the two hives will mix. Again, there is no queen in there. Uh, after, after that happens, they'll they'll eat through the newspaper and then the the bees were will in, intermingle and most likely those bees will go down to the brood nest after about four or five days so if not sometimes they don't sometimes they kind of stay clustered in their hive but they're they they have acclimated to the new hive and they're not fighting with them anymore so then you can just pull the paper off and shake them out of this hive or whatever and they'll they'll be fine but this is the reason I like this method is because you do it once and if something happens and you can't make it back to the bee yard, the bees will take care of being able to mix between the two hives. And worst comes to worst, you don't make it back for three months. You have a three-tiered colony, but you have a colony. So 
That's why I like the newspaper method. That's what I'm gonna show you today. Okay, so this process will go pretty quick. Uh, I normally staple, you can see a staple here probably, uh, my hives, that one doesn't have them actually. But most of my hives have staples on them. That's so that I can check them in the winter. So I can do like a tilt test to check their weight. But um, in this case, I, I specifically left it unstapled so that I could just throw it on there. So when I take that hive body off and put it on here, I'm gonna have to take that screen off as well. But the trickiest part of this whole process, the newspaper method, that's one advantage, I guess, of the other methods is that um, you don't, ha it's easier to put them on, especially in the wind, and it's getting a little breezy. And I don't know if you can see them, but they, they aren't happy that I'm in here. That's why I'm, I'm uh, wearing a veil, too. It's, it's only about 48 degrees, so it's pretty cold, but I got a front coming in, and I really want to get these hives united which is why I'm doing it in such adverse weather conditions. However, it's warm enough for bees to be flying. So it should be okay. But, just give them a little bit of smoke. It really doesn't take much smoke even on a cold day like this. Uh, what's going to irritate them more is when I put the paper down it's going to rub against them. But being that bees like to propolize things, you can use that to your advantage. So when I put this paper down, I stick it as best I can. With the propolis. Hey everybody, my battery died while I was uh, Unite in this hive, but basically all you do is you put a piece of paper on there, you cut five or six slits in there with your hive tool. They're small slits. I usually find the, the top bars in there and then I cut the slits. And I'm not sure at what point my uh, my battery died, but you know, I'll, if, I, if I have it in there, I'll show it to you on the video, obviously. And uh, then I just slid the hive body on. So these bees are all ones that came kind of off the bottom and uh, they'll, they'll unite with a hive or this hive, one or the other, over the next day. And then the last step after you get the newspaper on and you get the hive body on is to open it up, open up that top entrance. So I have a top entrance in the back. All I gotta do is slide my lid to the back and they're, they can get in and out now. So these bees will probably swing around here and go in through that rear entrance. Uh, but either way, they'll be okay. So anyway, the next step is to just remove this last hive body and shake the bees out of it and remove the frames. And then, uh, then you have your, your Unite totally complete. One other possibility if you wanted to do is, this is early, this is not even spring yet, it's actually winter. We're about four days from spring. And uh, I think it's the 16th, might be the 17th, but I think it's March 16th. So we got a few more days and until spring actually. So. Another thing you can do is actually, if you wanted to, you could keep this third tier on here and then come back in a month and split the hive again. Then you can split them and have this colony make their own queen because they will then be able to do that. But uh, in, I, in, either, in either case, a, a full Unite actually involves removing this third hive body and the frames as well, shaking the bees out of it. But most of the bees are gonna go down into the cluster down here below. So I'll see you in a few days. Okay, we're back. So it's been five days since we put this hive on here. So we're gonna, just real quick, we're gonna uh, take this hive off real quick, the hive body, and you'll see what happened to the newspaper in there. It's, uh, apologize for the wind. These are the best situ conditions we had to be able to come into the hive. Looks like there are a lot of bees up here still. but we won't know if they uh, mixed at all, if their odors mixed really, until we lift up this hive. 
or how many bees are still up here. Looks like quite a bit. It has been five days, so if the queen decided to move up, that can happen too. Let's go ahead and see if they ate through here. Oh yeah, see, get this newspaper down here. Let's see here. So you can see it's all eaten away. Of course, there was some paper up there, this here, but you can see how it's all been eaten away. Pretty much, so we know that they've been mixing, the bees have been mixing the entire time, so. Obviously it's best to do this on a day that's not so darn windy. Sometimes you don't have a choice, that's why you're a beekeeper. You keep bees and you do what you have to do, not just when it's convenient. So I always take the paper out. I have a fenced yard here so it won't go anywhere. And then I just have to get the bees out of there into here. But mainly for this video, all I wanted to show you was what happened with the paper and uh, I'll keep it rolling and just, William's gonna keep it rolling for a minute here. And you'll see that when I shake the bees on there, there won't be any fighting. It'll just be like when you shake bees normally on a hive. We start with these light frames. And of course these bees will try to do it in between gusts of wind. Get all the bees off the comb. When you get all the bees off the comb, follow me, William. You get all, all the bees off the comb, throw it in a, a separate hive body. That you can cover up. And you just slowly work your way through the hive body to do that. And you've dropped them down to two hive bodies and united the two hives. So that's how you unite two colonies. Again, sorry about the wind. It's uh, early spring and in this part of the country, it gets really windy this time of year because we have so many trees that are wind pollinated, but. And just in case you're wondering, this drone brood frame and one more is a reason that the there were so many bees still up in that upper hive body. You can see that even though the queen was a drone layer and going bad, she still had a decent pattern which would differentiate her from a laying worker situation. This is something I should have picked up on in the first video. And then here's just a real quick shot of the hive after I was done shaking all the bees off. No fighting, it all went well. And two hives are now one. Hope you like that, hope it helps.